June 1939. HMS Hood, the most famous battle cruiser in the Royal Navy, leaves her home port of Portsmouth as the Second World War looms. Just under two years later, she will be sunk in a cataclysmic explosion, fighting to stop two giant Nazi warships from erupting into the North Atlantic and slaughtering the convoys on which Britain's survival depends. Hood's sacrifice in the Battle of the Denmark Strait is epic. Tragedy on an incredible scale. Only three survive out of a crew of 1,418, most of them young men. Her loss staggers the Navy, the nation, and the world alike. I was serving in a cruiser, Rio cruiser, which was um, in the South Atlantic, and we were coming into Durban in, in South Africa after a long time in the South Atlantic, and we heard on board a tannoy of another ship that Hood had been in action with a German battleship. This came out on the air, and um, I think it said on the signal with we fear a considerable loss of life. And um, the people on board the Hawkins and the other ship could not believe what they heard and felt that this was something that couldn't possibly have happened. I must admit, I started to cry because it had been my home for over a year. And um, it was only shortly afterwards that we heard of the awful disaster of um, we're going down in three minutes and three survivors. May 2021, exactly 80 years on from Hood's loss. The Royal Navy's newest warship is getting ready for her next operational deployment. HMS Tamar is made on a smaller scale than Hood, but the values the battlecruiser embodied of service, courage and resolve are the very same as alive today as they were in Hood's final, fatal battle. For these serving sailors, as they reflect on members of Hood's crew just like them, the line is unbroken. With their ship alongside, on a blustery, windswept day, they look back at their forebears of 1941. Obviously felt full of pride coming from such a great lineage like that, but also feel awful because obviously he was only 22 when he died. I'm 26 and I'm only just starting to get things in motion for my life and he never got the chance to do stuff like that. Think about how his family must have felt about him. My family all dead proud that I'm in the Navy, all happy. I'm sure his family were proud but they'd have been worried every day knowing that he might not have came back, which eventually is what happened. One lucky shot, like, sunk it within an hour, like, it's quite shocking. And then it, and it brings back to the fact that, like, it could happen to one of us, or, like, a 45 or a carrier. Those guys were going to sea without knowing whether they were, they were coming home. I mean, it, it must have been tough for him, being one of only three survivors. Um, I was pretty impressed by how the amount of time he actually served after what happened. I think he ended up doing around 35 years in the Navy, which is amazing. Um, I can't imagine what he must have been going through at the time. Similar to those of 1941 and the time of Hitchmas Hood. 
we still live by the same code, the white ends lie behind me today as it did in HMS Hood, and the stories of my sailors are very similar to those of the sailors in HMS Hood. Hood veterans remember their great ship as literally a legend in her own lifetime. She was one of a kind, and the premier icon of the Royal Navy in which they served. Eighty years on, the memories linger. Good God, we're going to be drafted to the hood. Yeah, that's, that's really something. That's a really... You know, the hood was in, an important ship before the war. Everybody knew about the hood. It was my first ship, and uh, I was a stranger to lifestyle in the Navy, and it was a very good education. I went aboard the ship, and uh, there was about... 20 of us a lot to one mess, and we met uh, people who had been in the Navy for quite a while, and from them we then got knowledge of how the Navy at sea worked. And it was very good indeed. Their, um, their attitude was to help you. So no matter what happened, there was always somebody there to give you advice, and it was a very good training. And the crew of the Hood, quite a big crew, were very happy. I feel an incredible affinity with the sailors of 1941 and HMS Hood. I feel the same responsibility to our sailors as Captain Kerr would have felt to his sailors, and taking them to sea with the perils that that would encompass. And for him, especially in a time of war and great uncertainty, that must have been an enormous strain. The HMS Hood Association works to keep alive the memory of this mighty ship and all who served in her. The association website contains a wealth of detail about the ship. There is a complete cross-index roll of honor covering her last ship's company with pictures of over a thousand of the 1,415 lost in the Battle of the Denmark Strait. It's a collection that continues to grow year on year, recording all who sailed in Hood during her 20 years of service to Great Britain. There are scores of other pictures, deep information about the ship in all her aspects, and links to films and videos about Hood. A key moment in the history of the association was the dedication of her ship's bell. Recovered after 20 years of work by undersea explorer David Mearns, supported by the late Paul G. Allen, philanthropist and joint founder of Microsoft. The bell is now to be seen in the National Museum of the Royal Navy in Portsmouth and its significance for all who honor the memory of HMS Hood cannot be overstated. The purpose of getting the bell was to have a lasting memorial for the 1,415 officers and men who lost their lives in that tragic day. Um, the ship will gradually um, erode onto the seabed, uh, and this will, in years to come, act as that lasting memorial to the sacrifice and courage of those who died on board her on that, that very sad day. I can't thank them enough, be eternally grateful for everything, but it's not even just us, it's the whole world that they helped save at the time. Everything that we have comes from what they did back then. I'm very pleased that the Hood Association are keeping the memory of HMS Hood alive. It's an important lesson, it's something that we must remember. And there were a number of ships, and men and women, that made the ultimate sacrifice in that terrible conflict. It's why we wear the poppy today, it's why we have Armistice Day, it's why I'm sure a number of servicemen and women serve, and it's incredibly important that we remember the sacrifice that they made. From HMS Hood to HMS Tamar, the values that made the Royal Navy what it has been and is remain unshaken. Keeping alive the memory of one of Britain's greatest warships is a commitment to which the HMS Hood Association will hold fast, now 
and in the years to come.